Might I call it the last two minutes of the Monday Night Football game? <laughs> That's the only two minutes that really mattered. Yeah. Last week, we did a segment on with this video about the players behaving badly with referees and like they almost like the substitute teachers, the kids acting up. It totally reversed. I know we've got bad teacher going on here, bad referees. All week, all weekend long, it was a bad play. And they just put the cherry on. No, no, it wasn't a cherry. It is a, an apple. I don't know what. Some kind of, it was horrible. It was horrible. And, yes, I follow two teams in the NFL very closely, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers. And, to me, the America's team is, is marketing the Cowboys, but America's team is the Green Bay Packers. And this mm. is, around the country, this, is, this has been huge. That play Monday Night Football. How could they, they say that the, the, the Seattle Seahawks guy caught the ball? This this was it, it, it was awful, and and mm. uh, and and I, I think it pretty clearly cost the Packers the game. There are some people in Seattle who are arguing that on Green Bay's touchdown drive there was a bad interference call, without which on third down, without which they wouldn't have scored a touchdown. But that was a, that was a borderline call that was very within the realm of the normal thing you would see with the non. That was not even comparable. Even, you know. in any way to some of the stuff, some of the nonsense that we saw at the end of this game. You're right, it has changed. It has changed from the, the kids are acting up because of substitutes here to these calls are just horrendous. Last night was a tipping point. Last night was a tipping point in the way this is being perceived to the point where this is going to be, this has a chance to be, if it lasts much longer, season defining. People are going to look back at this and say, yeah, 2012, yeah. that year where the refs were just, what was going on there? I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to have impact on the, the sort of the history of the game going forward if they don't fix it now. National news store shows like the Today Show and shows like that this morning were leading with this. Not sports uh, media, national news media was leading with this. Uh, the NFL has a real problem here and I'm astounded. I, I didn't think it would be this bad. Let me ask you this. Who are these guys? These are guys that couldn't get a job in college football. I think that's right. I think that's, and that's right. Who, and people are paying millions of legitimate, paying legit dollars to go to these stadiums. Go ahead. Legitimate college, college referees even at the Division II and Division III level, are working on Saturday. They're not working NFL no. games the next day. Who no. are these guys and where did they come from is, a, I think, a very good question. These are guys that couldn't get those other jobs. And, and Rick Riley uh, always has some great uh, phrases. Basically, paraphrasing him, said, this is like having an par expensive pair of loafers and you keep walking in poop. That's what's going on out there right now. It's a beautiful image, yeah. You, know, you have a great league, but people are paying big money for TV rights to watch it, but also how much the fans in the stands? I go to that game and watch that outcome. Well, I guess I would have been happy it was in Seattle, but I've gone to Packer, I've, gone, I've traveled with the Packers all over the country, and I would not have been happy for that result. Absolutely. That, that, that could be damaging for the playoffs coming up. Oh, absolutely. This could, it could impact the season in a lot of ways. I mean, but, but I, I think we're, we're still at the point now. Where this is, where this is to some extent a novelty. You know, everybody's talking about, everybody's talking around the water cooler today in America about the $150 million that shifted when the Packers yeah. didn't cover the point spread right, the on point this spread because of this call, you know, that kind of stuff. But if this keeps going on week after week after week after week, then it's not going to be $150 million anymore. Then people are going to start, the novelty is going to start to wear off and the f how flawed this is is really going to come to the forefront and not in a good way. They really said that when a game was changed by the outcome of these referees was when things would get done. I, I, I think your point's even more well taken. When Vegas gets involved, and Vegas just got screwed here, and 68% yeah. had, had paid put their money on the Packers. Yes. Okay? Yeah. That's huge. This isn't going to happen very long before the, the NFL's got to step in and do what the referees want and get these guys, the real guys back in here. And let's be clear, if 68% of of the money that was bet on that game was on the Packers. That's what we always hear Las Vegas doesn't want. Las Vegas, they say, massages the line so it's 50-50. Well, if it's 68% and 68% are losing and the casino is winning 68%, something is rotten in Denmark, as my grandmother used to say.